Hey folks, welcome to part five of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is gonna be, which feature in Tableau helps to reduce data noise based on measure values? Is it going to be filter sets, highlighting, or clustering? Which of these helps you to reduce data noise? That's the keyword. The second keyword here is gonna be measure values. So first of all, let's start with the first option. So filters, so if I go into Tableau, uh, and have a view like this, what is filter going to allow me to do? So let's say I have something like, um, like category and I drag that into filters. Does that really help me reduce noise? No, not necessarily, and not, not with just a filter. You can, in a sense, if you wanted to create a calculated field and maybe you want to filter based on like a particular rank, but um, as far as uh, reducing data noise, a filter would not help you uh, in isolation. How about sets? Do sets help? Well, what is a set? Think of a set as a subset of a dimension. So if you have, let's say, subcategory, I can right click, I can go to create, and then I can create a set. And of those available subcategories, I can, you know, maybe create a set by identifying a few that I would like to be uh, included in part of that set. So if I hit OK, for instance, that creates this set over here, which then I could drag into filters and I could only look at uh, those particular subcategories. Um, and you have different options in terms of whether you just want to show what's inside or outside the set or, um, or you know, be able to distinguish between the two. But again, long story short, does that help you with reducing data noise? No, because again, that's very much rule-based. That's something you would have to set up and it doesn't really reduce noise to begin with. Third option here is highlighting. We went over this in the past, but you know, you can set up highlighting, which would essentially allow you to maybe click on or hover over something. Um, and in return, anything that's corresponding that you configure here, it would highlight that particular row. So I could have something like this where I, you know, hover over anything on sheet 13. And correspondingly, I want something on the same sheet, sheet 13, uh, to be highlighted. And in this case, it could be, a, you know, a specific set of fields, like just category. You're not gonna really see a huge difference here because there's not a lot of data, but as you can see when I mouse over, th over something, the other marks sort of get dimmed out in a sense. They're less apparent and this one stands out. Um, but again, that's not really reducing noise. Yes, you're bringing attention to the area that needs it by being able to highlight, but that does not reduce the actual data noise. Um, and again, it has nothing to do with the measure of value. Remember, that's part of the question here. It doesn't have anything to do with the value. It just has to do with whatever uh, you happen to be mousing over. Last option is clustering. What is clustering? Well, let's, uh, let's demonstrate real quick. So if I wanted to see kind of maybe the relationship between sales and quantity um, at, I don't know, maybe like uh, a product level, right? So I'll create a scatter plot. I'll start with that. And then I'll go to the analytics pane and then I will use the cluster model to bring it over here, right? And now this should generate, um, there it goes. So this cluster pane pops up and here are the variable uh, variables we're comparing. So quantity versus sales and based on, I, you know, the overall population and the number of clusters. So let's say I wanted to divvy this up into maybe seven clusters. Now you will notice that it's going to update. It's going to have seven different colors based on, um, you know, how strong those data points are, those relationships are. And as a matter of fact, not, not a lot of people know this, but you could actually drag, so I have this cluster that I just configured, right? These seven clusters. I can actually drag this to the, uh, to the data pane over here, and that would then create, as you can see here, this particular cluster for the product name. And now if I wanted to maybe create a different sheet, like if I just wanted to see, um, you know, sales or yeah, something like uh, sales by product, or actually, let me, let me do it this way. So sales by product. Um, and then I wanted to also bring this here. I could also filter, right? So based on, you know, I know from that previous screen, that analytics view that we were building, that if I just focus on maybe the top three, those are gonna show me the most significant three clusters because the rest of them, as you can see over here, they're not as, um, powerful that's not it's not a huge population if that makes sense so uh i know that's a lengthy example but yes 
The last option here is going to be correct because it, it can help you reduce data noise. And all of that is based on the actual underlying values, the measure value. So that's gonna be the solution here. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, which types of visualizations effectively compare parts of a whole? We see this over and over again. You should absolutely know this. You know, the first thing should, that should pop out is definitely gonna be the first option, the pie chart. That is known to be, you know, the main visual for seeing parts of a whole, um, you know, traditionally in a traditional sense. But let's go through these options. So you have pie chart, tree map, line chart, bar chart, and stacked bar chart. So which of these basically allow you to see a holistic um, view of a particular measure, but also at the same time, simultaneously, let you see parts of that whole. So to demonstrate, let me just go back here and clear this visualization. So we'll start over. And let's say I wanna see sales by, uh, by category, right? I wanna see parts of a whole. So I wanna see my overall sales, and then I wanna see, you know, which categories take up the most part or, or what have you. So by default, I can create um, a pie chart. And you'll notice this represents the overall sales number, right? And then over here is where I have the actual individual, you know, at a category level, the sales that make up parts of this overall whole. So obviously pie chart would be one of the correct solutions. How about a tree map? I can click on tree map and you'll see the same thing, right? You have this holistic number here. And, you know, in a previous video, we did kind of go through uh, the idea that you could even, in a hierarchy setting, make this more powerful, right? So now you have this entire holistic view of your overall sales. Then over here, you have all your technology, you have your furniture over here, but then you can drill down further and see the subcategory. So this is a great example of parts of the whole. So tree map is also gonna be one of the correct solutions. Third option is line chart, right? For that, we need something that basically has like an order date. That's probably the best way to show it. Does this show you parts of a whole? It does not, right? It just shows you um, basically a trend over time if that's what you're after. Um, if it was an area chart, maybe you could argue that um, it does help with seeing parts of a whole, but a line chart in itself does not. So that's not gonna be the correct solution. Fourth option, bar chart. So if we go in Tableau and I just created a bar chart, simple bar chart sales by category, you have something like this, right? Does this help you see parts of a whole? No, because you have these independent measures you have furniture office supplies technology it doesn't really show you at a glance what makes up what percentage of the overall whole population so that's not going to be the correct solution a bar chart in itself does not show you parts of a whole how about the last option stacked bar chart right so um, in order to create a stacked bar chart and really show you a proper example we're going to have to use two dimensions so in this case i have category now I'm also gonna collect, uh, click subcategory, then I'm gonna click stacked bar, and notice what happens. We still have those same bars, right? We still have the furniture bar, the office supplies, the technology, but within each of these bars, I now have subcategories, right? So I could see parts of a whole. I can see furniture as a whole, and I could see the different subcategories like bookcases, chairs, and their corresponding values that add up to that whole. So that's definitely one other way to see parts of a whole. So in summary, what are gonna be, uh, you know, considered the correct solutions? The pie chart, the tree map, and the stacked bar chart. Next question, uh, what can be found in the analytics pane? And you can select multiple options. And this can get tricky, especially if you try to do it with your eyes closed, which you, you pretty much have to in the, in the Tableau desktop specialist exam, at least because, um, you don't have access to Tableau when you do take that exam. So it can be a little bit confusing, but this is why we kind of go over questions like this. So what can be found in the analytics pane? So let's head over onto the analytics pane right next to the data pane. I'm gonna click on it and you will see the different options. So is totals one of the options? Yes. Um, if you are interested, um, let me show you real quick how that can be useful. If not, feel free to skip ahead. But if you have something like a table, which is where I commonly use totals, and I think you pretty much have to just use them in totals. But, um, and I wanna see this on a month by month basis. Uh, I'm gonna make this uh, discrete over here. And then I just wanna limit to maybe the last year, right? So the very last year, 2022. Now I have all of my sales from January all the way to December. 
let's say I want to add like a year to date or a total year whatever column right so for that you can go to the analytics pane you can grab totals bring it to your row grand totals and notice now you have a grand total chart and if you want you have a bunch of different options you can move this all the way to the left if you wanted to rename this you just go to format maybe call it um, year to date that's something I like to do all the time and now you have um, a very nice useful uh, table with the actual totals that you grabbed from the analytics pane. So again, to answer the question, uh, totals definitely could be found in the analytics pane. Totals here is going to be one of the correct solutions. Next option, box plot. When you think box plot, what comes to mind? Maybe a visualization, right? So why would it be in the analytics pane, you would think? But it is actually in the analytics pane, as you could see here. So that's another thing that you would be able to grab from the analytics pane. Next option, constant line. Again, that's something you could also grab from the analytics pane. So that's another uh, viable solution. Uh, fourth option, Gantt bar. Because, you know, if you think about it, it is somewhat of an analytical visualization. Unfortunately, no, that one is not going to be in the, uh, in the analytics pane. Uh, if you're referring to a bullet graph, that would be under the show me. But in terms of when you hear Gantt bar, that's something that appears in the marks card. So it's actually over here. That's how you would generate um, a Gantt bar. So that's not in the analytics pane. How about histogram? Again, histogram, you would think, you know, uh, somewhat of an analytical uh, visualization. But again, at the end of the day, it is a visualization. So there are ways to build it, but that's not something you would use the analytics pane for. You could create one just by having one measure and clicking on show me, for example, if you, if you don't want to do it yourself, but the analytics pane could not be used for that. So the only viable correct solutions here are going to be the totals, the box plot, and the constant line. Next question, which data management features does Tableau offer to enhance analysis? And you could select multiple correct options here as well. Data blending, data pivoting, data clustering, data joining, and or data cleansing. Which of these does Tableau allow you to do? So again, are we allowed to blend data? Yes, absolutely. I don't need to go through this over and over again, but let's say you have a data source here. You can go to your data source tab over here or in the menu bar, you can go and add a new data source. I'm not gonna wait just for the, for the sake of time here, but as long as you have two data sources, you can go on any one sheet. Let me, let me just kind of do this real quick. So I'm gonna click on this new data source. Let's say I wanna add another data source another instance of sample superstore, right? Let's go with that. And once that loads back to my sheet, and as you can see here, um, this is my primary uh, data source, right? If I wanted to bring in a, you know, any kind of field or values from my other data source, you'll notice uh, you could often use some fields to create somewhat of a linkage in between, but long story short, if you look at the, you know, your primary data source is gonna have the blue check mark, your secondary data source is gonna have the orange check mark, and you are able to work um, with values from both data sources as a result of blending, and that's essentially what blending is. So you can use data blending. How about pivoting? Well, just like an Excel sheet, right? If you have something like this, and I just wanna maybe pivot it over, similar to what you do in Excel, you could certainly do that with Tableau. Third option, data clustering. We just went over an example in this video, so obviously we can do that. Fourth option is data joining. Again, as long as you have um, uh, in Tableau, if you access the physical layer, right? So this is the logical layer because we have like these curved, um, curved lines over here. If I double click anything that exposes the physical layer, then I can you know br bring in any other table within the data source. Um, and I'm able to join using inner, left, right, full outer, and I can identify the keys and all that fun stuff. So yes, you can join data in Tableau. You could also do it through a SQL query within Tableau. Um, so that's also gonna be a correct solution. Last option, data cleansing. Can you actually clean data with, uh, with Tableau? The answer is gonna be no. For cleaning, that's, you're really talking Tableau prep builder territory at that point. So that's what you would uh, what you would use Tableau prep for. So the only correct solutions here are gonna be the first four options. Next question. What allows users to create dynamic and interactive filters in Tableau? Is it going to be parameters, extracts, criteria shelf, or the highlight action? So we covered this in a prior video. But yes, parameters is going to be the correct solution because 
um, in a sense they do, or not, not in a sense, but they do allow you to interactively change the values of a parameter and then a, a parameter could drive a calculated field that you then use as a filter. We covered this, I, I believe in the first video, so be sure to check that out um, if you haven't already. So that's gonna be the correct solution. It's not gonna be extract because that's not a dynamic nor interactive way to filter data at all. In fact, it's just a matter of um, how frequently or how you wanna store data, whether it's uh, sourcing it from a live SQL connection or storing it on a uh, recurring basis. Third option is criteria shelf, uh, but there is no such thing as a criteria shelf in Tableau that would actually be the filter shelf. So this is not the correct option. Uh, last option is highlight actions. So highlight actions don't actually filter anything. They only highlight or make uh, certain areas of your visualization more prominent as opposed to the you know other items that you're not selecting. So it is dynamic and interactive, but it has nothing to do with filtering anything. So the only viable solution here is going to be parameters. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Examiner Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available, so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know, practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. As always, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, as always, I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.